Hello everyone, George here and welcome to a huge update on the GFS gallery. I'm going to go through each aquarium, there's four aquariums. I did leave a poll on my YouTube community page to ask you guys, did you want an individual deep dive on an aquascape or did you want a general update? And by a small margin you opted for a general update. So here we are. Mostly good news to tell you, but there is some bad news. I'll show you that at the end. One of the scopes is looking horrendous and I'll explain why. So I hope you enjoy it guys. Give me a thumbs up if you do. Subscribe if you haven't already. And then leave me a comment at the end. I'll ask you a question to do with this disastrous scape and uh, we'll see what you think. Okay, so let's start off by taking a look at the Malawi cichlid scape, shall we? So let's start off with this Awaze Highline 175, home to my Malawi cichlids. These are Chindongo Suluizi, and we have four males and six females. The females are the yellow, the males are the blue and black stripes. Stunning fish. Really like this aquascope. Triangular composition, as you can see. Deliberately designed to have lots of caves and overhangs, etc., so the fish can establish their own territories. To excuse the reflections, it's actually quite a bright day here in the UK today. And it's just a really nice tank to live with. It's very tall compared to the other tanks, so it is ideal to view as you walk past the aquarium. It is ideal to be viewed standing up. And I've did, that's why I've positioned it here in the gallery so you can see it as you walk through to the kitchen area. Here's my office area here and there's the garden. Excuse the dog toys on the floor. <laughs> um, and this scape is, is great to be viewed from this side as well. And you can just see how healthy those fish are looking. I think they're quite hungry. I think they're always quite hungry. If I just wave my hand like this, they tend to think they're going to be fed. Let's feed them, shall we? So this is the food I use. This is from Kev's Riffs. Scott Lynch gave me this as a sample. I actually keep it in this tub here. And just while I'm in here, you can see the filtration. This is the Oase Biomaster 350 Thermo. It's got the quick release pre-filter here. And then behind that, we've got the heater. I've actually got the temperature set quite low. It's about 23 Celsius, which is about 72 Fahrenheit, I believe. So let's feed the fish right now. So we just grab a pinch. I've also got some tablets, which you can stick to the side of the glass. So just a, a generous pinch here. There's actually a feeding station, it's feeding slot here. We just drop the food in, close the slot, and then watch the fish go crazy for it. They absolutely love this food. Excuse the reflections. You might have noticed, some of you uh, regular viewers have noticed I am mean, doing some more films with the phone. I just find the quality is acceptable. It's just so much easier. I can actually walk around with it and give you more of a first person perspective. I think it's actually potentially a better storytelling device than a fixed camera on a tripod, which is what I used to do. So I'd actually be interested to know what you think, guys. Do you like this kind of style of video or do you prefer the DSLR or maybe a mixture of the both, which is kind of what I'm trying to do. So there we go, the Oase Highline 175, home to my Malawi cichlids. Very simple, maintenance is, I try to do two huge water changes a week because they are messy fish and they are getting quite large now. Some would argue that this is overstocked, but you know, I'm speaking to experts and they think it's absolutely fine. So, and, and they seem healthy, they're feeding healthily, no signs of disease. And I'm really enjoying this aquarium. Okay, let's move over to Nimrod's tank, the Fluval Flex 57 litre or 15 US gallon. And he's pretending to be dead on the substrate. So I hope he's not dead, that would be um, a disaster. Here he goes. Nimrod, what are you doing down there? You want some food? Come on. Comes to say hello. I love this fish so much. I've never really had a pet fish before. I love him. He 
And if you're wondering why it's called Nimrod, it's after one of my favourite aircraft, which is the Royal Air Force Reconnaissance Aircraft. And also my favourite piece of classical music is called Nimrod by Edward Elgar. Look it up. It's a beautiful piece of music. It actually, don't mind admitting, it moves me to tears every time I listen to it. So the scape itself, there is a full tutorial video on how I aquascape this. And I would encourage you to watch this. I did spend a lot of time and effort on this tutorial video because I, I realised that this is a very popular aquarium. And I really wanted to show everyone how easy it is to create a beautiful aquascape. Very simple, classic foreground, mid-ground and background plants. Foreground is the Halanthium tenalum, tissue culture from Tropica, actually carpeting quite nicely, nice and slow. And in the mid-ground we've got Cryptocorini wendetii tropica. And we've also got some Anubius petite and regular Java fern attached to the wood. And then behind that we have got the classic now and arguably a trending plant, the Hygrophila siamensis 53b. So fun story for you. I did actually um, promote this quite heavily on the Tropical Fish for uh, Tropical Fishkeeping UK Facebook group. If you are a member of that, shout out to you guys. I even ran a contest giving away five plants of this and just started a bit of a fun campaign of promoting 53B and actually they have even got I Love 53B t-shirts available. So really great to have a bit of fun uh, with a, an aquatic plant and, and see how popular it can become. It is a great plant, a really fast growing background plant, instant impact will grow in most aquariums. So, you know, it is a really beautiful plant. And Nimrod is just loving it in here. He's on his own. There's one near right snail to help with algae control. Can't see him right now, but as you can see, no nuisance algae, super healthy plant growth. Just dosing one squirt of the premium Tropica fertilizer when I can remember. Feeding Nimrod a couple of times a day, just a, a mixture of a Tetra, Color Flake and Denelay. Uh, colour plus like, like a, a small granule and you can see the colours on Nimrod, absolutely stunning. Okay so let's move over to my favourite scape in the gallery, the Aquascaper 1200. I have just trimmed this, I will overlay the, I, I maintain this today, I will overlay the maintenance of what I did. So clean the glass, trim the plants right back. The stem plants have gone through their kind of first major trim. So the great thing about when you trim a plant, the stem plant is it will grow two new shoots from where you trimmed it. This is going to promote really bushy, dense growth. And it's going to look even more lush than it is right now. But I hope you agree, guys, this is looking really quite special. I love the way it's evolving. And there is an entire playlist dedicated to the scape, all the way from stripping the old scape down to choosing the new scape, the hard scape, the planting process, the algae that I, I got and how I dealt with that algae, basically by putting more fast growing plants in there. And yeah, just really loving this one at the moment and looking forward to carry on watching it mature. Ah, I could just see, they don't really see this guy or this female very often. This is the female epistogramma. Let's see if we can get a close up. These, I have a pair in here and they have actually bred and I have seen babies, but I think they've just been picked off by the bigger fish or even the Amano shrimp perhaps. She is gorgeous, isn't she? I love this. So this is epistogramma Cacoitoids, I think you pronounce it. Cockatoo, cichlid, it's the common name. And there's the male here. Beautiful, look at that, look at his tail. Stunning, stunning fish. I'm hoping it's in focus. Yeah, the phone's great, but it does have trouble auto-focusing sometimes, which is a little bit frustrating. The glow light tetras there, looking really great. The near right snails keeping the rocks nice and clean. This is Frodo stone. 
foreground carpet of Helanthium tenalum. You can find out what all the plants are in a previous video, I'll leave a link to that, or you can just watch the playlist. It will be quite a long playlist now, there's quite a few videos dedicated to the scape. And I think if you do have the time, I would encourage you to watch them all and you, you can see the entire journey from creating an aquascape from fresh to where we are right now. Lots of uh, cherry shrimp in here as well and lots of hiding places for them so they're not getting eaten, thankfully. Good old trident fern, lots of Anubius petite. Now the, the only kind of minor issue I'm seeing is lots of these snail eggs. So if I show you on, the, probably the best, easiest way to show you is on this stone here. Let's get that in focus. So you can see these white spots. Let's try and zoom in. These white spots here. Are snail eggs and they're very very stubborn really stubborn um, you have to pick them off with like a metal pick but you know what I'd rather I'd rather see little white specks than black brush algae <laughs> so I'm quite happy to leave them there for now let's run through the equipment shall we so we've got the twin star 1200s great light not a huge fan of the purple background here, uh, but it's a trade-off that I'm happy with to get the amazing color rendition of the plants and obviously the plant growth as well that we're enjoying. Uh, the, the aquarium itself is a prototype Aquascaper 1200, hence why we've got the milk very bubbling at the bottom there. I've been warned about that, but um, you excuse Tommy barking in the background. Uh, we're running two Oase Biomaster 600 filters. Let's dive into the cabinet. So running two Oase Biomaster 600 thermos. Uh, this has actually got the carbon sponges fitted to get super clear, super clean water. Uh, dosing, auto dosing the plant growth there, the Tropica specialized, auto dosing it with the um, DNDP1 and I'm dosing 15 millilitres a day. I might actually up the dosing a bit because I am seeing some pale growth on the faster growing plants. CO2 there, we've got the GLA regulator and running into a CO2 art in line diffuser. So there is, I do do more details on the equipment in another video. So like I said, if you check out the playlist, you'll be able to see which video that is. So let's just close that door. <clears throat> so really happy with the progress on this really excited to see how this is going to develop it could even potentially be a contest scape i have got some other ideas about how to how, how to evolve it um but i have also got other ideas actually about decommissioning it and putting another tank here but that's a story for another video but um it will be a very special tank uh, that's all i'm going to say right now um, so that's the, the three nice scapes, the 1200, the Flex with Nimrod and the Oase Highline. And now let's talk about the disaster. So here we have my Aquascaper 600. So story for you. Um, first of all, it went three weeks without CO2 with the light off. So I ran out of CO2 and I was so busy I didn't get round to uh, fitting the CO2. So rather than putting the light on without CO2 and definitely getting algae, I just turned the lights off. I got the CO2, I put the lights on and everything was good and the plants were kind of recovering. I mean, they're not, it's not a complete disaster right now. And then I went to Tropica for a whole, pretty much a whole week uh, in Denmark. And what happened was whilst I was away, and I've left this to show you. The Neo diffuser became detached from the glass, floating in the water. So all of the CO2 is escaping into the air. Light is running as normal. And then with that much light and no CO2, we get algae. And that is what we've got right now. And I, I wanted to show you a walks and all, you know, no, not holding anything back here, guys. This is genuinely what can happen 
when things go wrong with equipment, when you're not at home to look after things. The plants at the back are all dying off, um, really, un really unhealthy. It, it actually looks better in the video than it does in real life, um, but I'm really not happy with it. And do you know what? I'm not that fussed on the actual aquascape. I think Iwagumi is beautiful, but I'm really tempted. So two, two options, I can fix it and I can pretty much guarantee I can get it all back on track and get it looking good in sort of three or four weeks. Um, but it would it'd be quite hard work. It'd be a lot of manual labor. It would be, I'd have to be patient and I've obviously got all the other scapes to attend to and I've got my book to write, etc. Or do I create something from scratch? Just put it down to uh, bad luck, bad experience. And I'm really tempted to do a black water biotope. If and when I decide to do the black water biotope, you know, let me know guys what you think. Should I, should I do that? Should I strip the Urugumi down? And if I do do a black water biotope, which one should I do? South American, Southeast Asian, maybe Cambodia. Lots of black water kind of areas that we can that we can um, try to recreate the natural habitat. So let me know in the comments, and and maybe let's let's go let's let's make the fish the priority. So select a species of fish that definitely comes from a black water habitat, and then let's have a really good think and a really good bit of research. And I'll show you how I do that using fishbase.org, etc. And then we can. I could do a full tutorial on how we create the black water biotope. So I really want your input on this one, guys. If indeed you want me to strip down the irigumi, let me know what you think in the comments. Always read them and they're always really appreciated. Okay, guys, I'll just flip the screen around and, and say cheerio. I really hope you enjoyed this video and give me a thumbs up if you did. And like I said, let me know in the comments uh, what you think I should do with this should we strip it down and make a black water biotope? I really want to do it. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. You take care. Keep on scaping. Cheerio.